Ladies, gentlemen, and others, welcome back to Boss Comics. Uh, geez, this video was supposed to come out on Monday, uh, but uh, it didn't work out that way. Uh, time is a fickle thing, and oh boy, I was I was really busy yesterday. But uh, how are you all doing? Uh, how is everyone? Is everyone doing okay? Have we have we recovered from the uh, utter disappointment that was? Uh, Wednesday's issue of Amazing Spider-Man, uh, the the culmination of Nick Spencer's multi-year run on our beloved character. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, first things first, uh, before I jump into the meat of this video, I need to make a couple of minor corrections. Um, see, when I was reading the when I was reading the uh, issue when it came out. I, I knew enough to knew that I was to know that I was disappointed, but I, I think I misunderstood some things because I was kind of rage reading it. I was not reading it thoroughly. The last several pages, I was just kind of skimming through and and really just kind of going like, "Yep, yep, yep, okay, okay." We're not getting a confrontation, uh, and we're not getting a catharsis, uh, much less the marriage uh, getting back together. Which is like those are like the three things that I wanted. Like, and it was kind of like if I can't have one, I want to have at least. Some of the others, and I didn't get any of that. No catharsis, no confrontation, and certainly no marriage uh, reinstatement. So, um, by the end of it, I, I was being really salty. I wasn't reading it much at all. I was I was mostly looking at the pictures and skimming the dialogue and going, "Yep, yep, yep." So that that's on me. It doesn't change anything I said about my feelings uh, in my previous video. Um. You know, that 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 has not changed. But uh, just a couple of things about plot. So uh, in my previous video, I had said that um, I had mentioned Ben Riley uh, being uh, the Spider-Man uh, depicted in the, the far flung future of Mephisto's that the um, Mephisto uh, kind of uh, implies that at some point in the future he would have lost, but now, you know, he's going to win and his great powers, you know, he's going to rise to power and, and be awesome and evil. Um, but he was going to be stopped. And, and people were saying that, no, the, the implication uh, in his, his, our glimpse in the future is that uh, Mayday Parker would have stopped uh, Mephisto, uh, Peter and MJ's daughter. Um <clears throat> But because uh, of fuckery I brought about with the kindred shit, um, well, no, not because of fuckery brought about with the kindred shit, excuse me, because of fuckery brought about um, in one more day, it's implied that now because we won't have Mayday Parker, um, uh, 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 fucking uh, Mephisto's like future plans for domination uh, will be able to... Uh, you know, occur, uh, unimpeded, which is, which is just so depressing on so many levels. Um, now I, I don't think Mephisto is going to succeed in like taking over the fucking world or, or whatever. I just think that like, you know, more attention being called to the fact that yes, Marvel are dumb fucks and they don't allow characters to grow or change. And, um, you know, uh, <laughs> Marvel editorial has such a weird fucking idea about, you know, heroes uh, growing up and, and having families and it ages them and makes them less market viable. Like I, <clears throat> Peter Parker is not going to be fucking Tom Holland. You dumb fucks. No matter how much you want him to be. Tom Holland isn't going to be a child anymore. Like going forward. Tom Holland, I think is in his twenties as it is. So it's, it's so, this whole thing of Peter needing needing to perpetually being be a fucking five year old is so gross and weird and annoying. But anyway, the uh, the chain the 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 inability of American comics to change in any meaningful way is going to be a video unto itself in the future. But for now, we're talking about the Spencer thing. So I, I misunderstood the Mephisto plot, and I guess some people were satisfied with this issue to some extent because they're like, "Oh, okay, we have a justification for one more day now." I, if you hit me in the head with a fucking hammer and then you tell me that your family was kidnapped and like you were told like, you know, if you don't hit a uh, boss in the head with a hammer, uh, your entire family is, is going to be killed. I'm, I'm going to be understanding that you were under duress and I'm not going to like hate you, 
probably, but uh, you still hit me in the head with a fucking hammer, and I still have brain damage, so that's that still sucks. Um, <laughs> so I don't fucking I don't fucking understand these people who will just like you know eat whatever is offered to them on their plate and call it good. Um, I think those people are weak. <laughs> no, if you if you like this stuff, that's fine. I just I'm it just doesn't it doesn't solve my problems. And well, I, I had no illusion that the Spencer run was going to fix every conceivable issue I had with modern Spider-Man comics. I, I really did think that we were headed in a different place than we were. And I'm not just talking about, as I said last video, how I really thought we were going to get um, some true acknowledgement of one more day, which I still maintain we did not. Um, I so when this run came in, it was off the heels of the slot run. I've spoken at length about how much I hated the Dan Slot era. I'm not going to uh, rehash all that here. But I was very hopeful. The first issue or two, I was like, oh, damn, this feels really good. It's like it's still kind of got some wacky, zany science hijinks, which is cool. But um, there's still an element of, of seriousness of like this, like adult uh, themes, a certain maturity that I feel like Spider-Man's been lacking for a while and should, you know, used to have. And then they took it away because they're dumb fucks. Um, <clears throat> so I was I was really into it. We seem to be focusing a lot on the supporting cast, which I thought was awesome. Um, I was I was so excited because, goddamn, the supporting cast is super important to Spider-Man. Um if you go back and you read like the old comics from the sixties, now I don't think those are the best. I, I am eternally grateful to um, Lee and Ditko and Kirby and all of them for like fucking giving us what we have today. Don't get me wrong, but, uh, and I enjoy a lot of those 60s, 70s issues. I do. Um, I've read amazing Spider-Man, amazing Spider-Man, amazing fantasy 15. And I still think it's one of the best origin stories in comics, but um but I, I will say, uh, I, I, I don't think those are like the best comics. However, um, if you go back and you read them, Peter was the star of the comic. Like Peter Parker was, 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 the, was the center of the story. We were following Peter Parker's life. And then every so often, you know, like the Spider-Man shit is like what happens to disrupt Peter's life. The book is about him. The book is not about him being Spider-Man. The book is about a guy entering early adulthood, fucking, you know, dealing with interpersonal relationships and, and, and money troubles and, and what have you. Um, just being a guy who happens to be able to bench press cars and uh, 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 has a limited form of ESP and 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 can 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 jump uh, half the height of skyscrapers. Um, the, like shit happens and then he's like, oh, fuck, I got to go do superhero ness. Oh, no, that like that used to kind of be what it was, you know, and it, it, it books grow and change over time, at least in terms of like direction and theme. That's fine. Not characters, though, but like, <laughs> you know, um, that's all fine and good. I'm, I'm not I'm not bemoaning that. But like, if you look at like the, the JMS run, which I know I'm always slobbing the knob of the JMS run, it had some problems, mostly in its villains. But um, the JMS run, if you go back, that's like how it was. Peter was like a guy. He was being a teacher. He was a uh, 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 being a good husband, a good nephew to his aunt. He had like friends and, and family and just, he had like an internal life. It was, it was so good. It was kind of like a modern take on those old ethos of like the sixties, except now instead of like, um, you know, being a fucking teenager, uh, JMS was allowed to let him be like a, like a guy in his late twenties, early thirties. And he felt like that. He's like this young guy navigating life and figuring out who he is as an adult. And it's like, Oh, this is wonderful. Very relatable. And then they took it all away because Joe Casada is a dumb fuck. Um, so all this to say, I thought thematically, that's kind of what the Spencer run was going to be. And as you can tell from the title, which is going to be something akin to the missed opportunities of, you know, uh, of the Spencer run. Um, that's, that's not what we got. The, the, the supporting cast is barely in this book in 74 goddamn issues. What the fuck? Um, barely in this book. Holy crap. 
Like, um, and, and when they are, they're used to such ill effects. For what purpose is Carly Cooper in the goddamn book? Just as an aside, Carly Cooper is kidnapped at the end of the fucking uh, Sins Rising arc or whatever the fuck it was. Or maybe it was in the middle of the Sins Rising arc. Uh, she gets kidnapped. Uh, we don't check in with her for several issues. She leaves a voicemail on Mary Jane's phone. It gets cut off in a totally like what should be a totally alarming way. Right. And then um, nobody checks up on her. Mary's like, Mary Jane is like, yeah, I tried calling her a bunch of times. You can't in touch with her. I don't know. And then like it, that just like it's completely dropped. Meanwhile, she's stewing in fucking uh, in captivity with uh, with with clone with what we later find out is clone Harry Osborne. And uh, and the fucking she's this there wandering around. She's with Harry as he uncovers like some secrets or whatever. Um, and then I think at the end of, I don't even remember what happened to her in issue 74. She's not dead, obviously. No, I think she just like runs away. She gets away. But she literally served no purpose. <laughs> her only purpose was to be like, to, was to serve as another fake out. Because I, like earlier in that same issue, I think it was when Carly was kidnapped. Uh, we had a fake out where we thought maybe Nora Winters had been killed by the Sin Eater. So then, uh, you know, that happens and uh, it turns out Nora's fine. Then we think that maybe Carly Cooper has been killed. Nope. Turns out she's fine. She's been thrown arbitrarily in prison with uh, fucking Harry Osborn. Why was she even imprisoned? Why? Why Nora Winters specifically? What the fuck was that about? How did that happen? <laughs> Meanwhile, Aunt May has like completely disappeared from the book. And I, I can't remember, but I think. Maybe this has been something that's been implanted in my brain, but I feel like in the beginning of the run, there was something about Aunt May having cancer that got completely fucking dropped. <laughs> maybe I've made that up. I, I Maybe I heard that from another comic. It's been 74 goddamn issues and I haven't gone back and like reread the run. So I, I'm going off of feelings here more than an actual like remembrance of the plot. So it could. Hey, look. Please, like, fix my feelings, okay? Like, like, bring me back around to appreciate this mess. But I, I don't think that's what happened. Like, I think, yeah, Aunt May had cancer. That's a plot line that got dropped. We re rebuild this fucking beautiful uh, turning point in the friendship of Felicia and Peter with, uh, you know, Black Cat. Because uh, for those of you who don't know, because maybe you haven't been reading the Spencer run religiously, um... In like at the in the first issue of Spencer's run, uh, so Black Cat and Spider Man used to date back in the eighties. Cat was a dumb fuck, and she only wanted the superhero aspect. Like if he, Peter, like if he like took his mask off, she'd like turn into a lunatic and be like, "No, put your mask back on. I can't stand the sight of you as like a normal human." Oh God, it was so gross and weird. Dumb eighties melodrama. Um, I get what they were going for, but that plot point was so bizarre. And, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, that was a whole thing. She was like really immature and weird and, uh, chicanery later on in the spider comics, like eventually Peter's, uh, identity was, was the knowledge of it was taken away, uh, from everybody, uh, as a, uh, as a result of, um, one more day slash a moment in time. Uh, so nobody afterwards except for mj like remembered that peter was spider-man uh including black cat but she remembered that she used to remember who he was and that they used to be in a relationship and uh so nick spencer reveals at the uh in the new issue um uh you know in in in, in the new number one he reveals that like felicia's actually been really bothered by it She's like, I, you and I used to share this thing. And she's like, I'm over you. But like, it does bother me that we used to have this like deep personal connection. And I can't even remember who you are. And so he re reveals his identity to her and she's like crying tears of happiness and they have a big embrace and it's super cute and wholesome. And, um, and then she doesn't show up <laughs> until the hunted arc, which is like several issues later. Now, you know, in the hunted arc, we do some interesting stuff with all that, where we see that like, yeah, 
she like does appreciate that he shared this part of his life with her again, but now she's having flashbacks to all the missed opportunities, you know, what she really squandered, like how she really fucked up their relationship and how that, that really like, mm, she's mad at herself for, for what she kind of like threw away. And, um, and I appreciate that. That shows like a real growth of her character. It's like making her really angry and blah, blah, blah. It's, 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 it's a cool moment. It's, it's a real, it's a real character growth, um, for Kat. It kind of redeems some of her bullshit from the eighties. Um, so that's cool. She helps Spidey out in a big, bad way. Um, honestly, the black cat stuff is the least egregious. Like every time, every time something significant happens in the spider books during the Spencer run, like she kind of comes through, she's kind of integral during, uh, uh, the sins rising arc. She helps like steal an artifact for Spider-Man to help him get shit done. So like, that's cool. She definitely, she definitely helps, you know, she, she serves a purpose. unlike Carly Cooper. Um, but again, we never get to see them like hanging out. Like after that moment, we never get to see them hanging out or fighting crime together or, or just being bros like that. Okay. No, there is one story arc. I, okay, I take that back. There is one story arc that involves, um, oh, what is it? Some crime outfit in in the Marvel Universe. The Thieves Guild. It's like two issues. It's not important. But again, there's like no emotional payoff in there. They do like go on an adventure together, but they don't. There's no conversation. There's no. I'm not even saying I ship them. I I ship them in a reality where we're absolutely not going to be able to do anything with Peter and Mary Jane. But I, I, I'm not talking. I just I even just as like really close friends, I think that'd be super dope. And we don't really get to explore that. Harry is this big fucking part of the book, except. <sighs> I don't really buy the relationship between Harry and uh, and Peter in this book. There's there's so there's uh, mm, fucking it's it's more so much of it is honestly more about Norman and Peter right than it is about with like Harry. Um, what what is happening here when 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 Harry is supposedly revealed to be kindred and we later find out it's Gabriel but when we think that Harry's kindred has like okay great I don't care I don't care because Harry hasn't done any significant anything significant in Spider-Man comics in forever he's just kind of a background character like the fucking most notable thing he did in the last like fucking 15 years was have his uh, son kidnapped and infected with a carnage symbiote that's it <laughs> like Harry is such a nothing character I know that people are attached to him because of things from the uh jmd mateus stuff i get it but that was like fucking 30 years ago fam like i i just don't care um so when we're talking about missed opportunities from the spencer run undercooked relationships like through and through is probably the biggest part which is to say nothing of the disaster that was the handling of of one more day um everything just falls flat again. I the reveal of Gabriel and Sarah Stacy being the kindreds. I I can't. I'm sorry. I don't entirely believe that that was always Nick Spencer's plan. I that's so dumb and lame to me. I just don't buy it. Why the fuck? <laughs> Because why are they so fucking? Their dialogue doesn't make any fucking sense. Kindred constantly going on. You ruin everything, Peter. Oh man, we're we're so close. Oh, you're my close friend. Blah 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 blah. Like, ah, why? None of it makes any fucking sense. It. Mm. I think there's like some implication that maybe they're being possessed by the by the by the um by the spirit of Harry Osborne. I think that's meant to be like. I think the idea is that most of the time when we're hearing like um. Uh, Harry's monologue, you know, or, or Kindred's inner monologue. It's actually Harry talking, which brings me back to my whole thing of like fucking fuck you. Like Harry being Kindred is dumb uh, and doesn't doesn't provide any real emotional catharsis or uh, have any emotional weight to it, really. Um, but again, like Harry should have no reason to hate Peter <laughs> like that. That was all resolved. 
So that so even if we go with the idea that no, like like Harry was like uh, uh, fucking uh, inhabiting um, the kindreds, uh, and that's that's why you know kindreds inner monologues are all like uh, venomous uh, towards Peter. Uh, it's it's because you know because uh, Harry's in there and ranting. I don't buy it. I don't fucking buy it because that fucking whole animosity between them was resolved forever ago, like 30 fucking years ago. It's it's so what is happening? And and the thing is, like, Spencer obviously has. Uh, Spencer's obviously a fan of deep cuts, especially of the D. Mateus run. So it's like, why would. Why would he do this? Like, why would he make these choices? I don't understand. I, I've i bitched enough about the marriage and thing. I'm going to try to stop talking about it on this channel because I sound like a broken record at this point. But for the love of God, like, nothing in this run ultimately amounts to anything. P Peter is not in a, in a different place now. Then he was 74 fucking issues ago. It literally ends with the same shot. <laughs> the, the issue, if I remember right, if I remember right, issue 74 ends with a mirror of um, the same shot that issue one opens on. Now, you can do that and, and have it be poignant and, and beautiful. It's Peter and MJ together. And it's 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 cute and wholesome, of course. At least their relationship is still intact. Uh, for now, watch the next writer fuck it up. Watch, watch the Beyond Arc be the ruination of Peter and MJ's relationship. But, um, but, uh, but it it really is emblematic. Like nothing has changed. B Peter is in exactly the same place. MJ is in exactly the same place. Remember the whole thing about MJ's support group? Oh boy, that's another plot point that just got completely fucking dropped. Holy shit! What? What is happening? There is so much here that could have been so wonderful and it just got yeeted out the fucking window. I, sorry, the cats are being a little destructive in the background. I apologize. Um, I'm going to wrap up soon because it's been like 20 minutes. This is a long one. But I don't, I don't, I don't understand. When I talk about how this, this run leaves me feeling frustrated and empty. It's not just about the marriage shit. It's about this run promised to be so much more. Every time it fucking showed promise, it then promptly turned around and like cock slapped us with it. So I, I don't, I prefer the Spencer run over the slot run. But I am still, this run I think for me was a net negative. I'm glad that it cleaned some stuff up. I'm I'm glad for people who care about Sins Past that Sins Past was undone. Although I've seen people online saying that it still doesn't fix Sins Past for them, which I'm like, I don't I don't know what more you want. Like Gwen Stacy didn't sleep for Norman Osborn. Didn't sleep with Norman Osborn. What what more could you possibly want? Well, I don't know. We're 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 comic book fans. We're hard to please. Don't 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 judge them too harshly. I <laughs> I don't know. I just, you know, uh, we uh, fucking underutilized characters, fucking a bloated plot, a bloated mystery that went on and on and on and on and on. Oh, yeah. Last thing. I what was Kindred's actual plan? He didn't have one. Nothing happened. He didn't do anything. There's no plan there's no fucking culmination of a villainous scheme the whole time is an implication that like oh we're working towards something nothing happened did he have a plan please explain what it was because he just they just fight that's the plan the plan event to fucking kindred fucking in the end it, apropos of nothing, Kindred fucking grabs a whole bunch of villains, puts fucking murder worms in their ears, goes, ah, fucking kill Spider-Man or uh, the worm, the centipedes will eat your brains and then you'll serve me in hell as my little cock sleeves. And they fucking go and they um, they all fight Spider-Man and we had fucking four or five 
it, maybe six issues of Sinister War, which is literally just a six issues of battle and nothing else of just Spider-Man getting his ass kicked. It was basically like fucking murder porn. Um, Peter is all weak. Uh, he goes to the fight with Kindred and the Kindred is like, I'm going to kill you. And, and then uh, because vengeance, all that talk about you have to face your sins, Spider-Man, you have to atone for your sins. That never went anywhere. Holy shit. Just a great big bait and switch. Fuck all this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to stay tuned for the Beyond Arc. We'll see what happens there. Seeing Ben again is going to be cool. I don't know. So what were some things that you guys wanted to see in the Spencer run? You're sad that you didn't. Uh, what are some hopes you have for the Beyond Arc? Like, like it or not, this is where we're at. So what do you want to see going forward? Um, in the beyond arc. Are you sticking with the book? Uh, like I said, I'll stick with it because I'm never going to stop reading Spider-Man uh, and I'll, I'll try to keep you guys apprised of what's going on. I'm going to try to review every issue of the beyond arc. We'll see if I can stick with that. But, uh, are you going to be sticking with it? What are your thoughts? What are your hopes and dreams? Uh, I don't know guys. Next video, we're going to talk about some of the inherent problems with American comics and, 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 and storytelling. But for now, thank you so much for listening to this massive rant. Uh, incoherent though it may have been. Uh, if you'd like to support what I do here, uh, you can make a one-time $3 donation down at the link below and buy me a coffee. Uh, like, subscribe, please. We're at 75 subscribers. I would love to hit 100 before the end of the year. That would be super awesome. So, um... If you are interested in uh, micro podcasts about comics, art, and animation, uh, in theory, Monday through Friday, more often than not, just a couple of times a week, um, hit subscribe, hit the bell, hit the like button. It helps a lot. Leave a comment down below. Until next time, guys.